Good afternoon. My name is Ian Wyman, and today I'm defending the Anoplophora glabropennis, or Asian longhorn beetle, in a debate with my partner, Nolan, about what species would be more invasive compared to the other. I am Nolan Ost, a freshman econ major from Midlothian, Texas. The species I will be defending is Diaphorina citri, better known as the Asian citrus psyllid. Today, my partner Ian and myself will be debating which would be a better invading species, an issue very relevant to our two species. The Asian citrus psyllid is typically 3 to 4 millimeters in length with a yellowish brown body and a light brown head. Due to their very invasive nature, the bugs tend to be more populated toward newly developing vegetative areas, including areas which are high in flowers, fruits, leaves, and twigs. It is thought that the bug originated in India or another similar place in southern Asia. The typical life cycle of the bug lasts from 15 to 47 days, and there are typically 9 to 10 generations per year. While very similar to aphids, psyllids are different in that they are much more active and they are very impressive jumpers. The Asian citrus psyllid damages citrus plants by feeding on sap while also serving as a vector for citrus cleaning disease. It is because of this effect on the citrus industry that the bug is aptly named the Asian citrus psyllid. By feeding on citrus sap, the insect greatly handicaps the citrus industry, and by effect of that, it greatly hurts the economy, especially in key American agricultural states like Florida and Georgia. I think that this shows the invasive nature of the Asian citrus psyllid, also showing that it is a superior invader when compared to the Asian longhorn beetle. The Asian longhorn beetle are pretty large in their adult stage, measuring up to 1.6 inches in length. These beetles also have colored spots on their wings, long antennae that can be up to two times the length of their body. In terms of lifespan, the beetle usually lives one to two years, with their most active months being April through October. In their two weeks prior to mating, the adults eat leaf stalks exclusively. The adults locate the trees they're going to feast on using visual and chemical cues, while using certain pheromones to locate their mates. Contrary to, male, to males, Females live approximately 66 days, during which they can lay anywhere between 50 and 125 eggs, helping it to be an extremely rapidly growing species and furthering its threat as an invasive species. Originating from Asia, this, the beetle was known well for its damage on forest ecosystems in Korea and China. The difference between the two being that the beetle occurred in huge densities in China compared to the smaller densities in Korea. In the early 1990s, they were detected outside Asia in New York City where the first wave of populations were eradicated and exterminated, but they returned and were able to spread across some mid-Atlantic states like New York, New Jersey, and Massachusetts. The beetle also has a foothold in Europe, in countries like Austria, France, and Germany. The beetle is known to inhabit at least 15 different types of trees. The primary damage these beetles inflict are done during their larvae stage of their lifespan, where they establish a quote-unquote feeding tunnel of sorts, where it begins to feed through the tree, eating critical parts such as the heartwood and the sapwood. This damage is so severe that it is known to do more damage than other major ecological threats like Dutch elm disease, chestnut blight, and gypsy moss. Due to the massive threat they pose, countries like the United States and France are passing massive eradication efforts. One year, the United States spent an estimated $373 million towards finding a source of eradication. The damage the beetle inflicts on trees, on trees and forest ecosystems affects recreation, tourism, and some industries derived from trees. One such industry is the maple syrup industry in New York, where these beetles are threatening Norway maple trees using the production of maple syrup. The major characteristics unique to these beetles is their expanse, expansive reproduction rate, which allows them to multiply at extremely high rates and becoming an extremely threat, threatening invasive species. Their sophisticated and primarily undetected me method of destruction towards their host trees. These species produce a massive threat and if unchecked can wreak a lot of damage to, their, to the affected forest ecosystems. Ian's Asian longhorn beetle measures up to 1.6 inches in length, making it much more susceptible to the dangers posed by nature. It is no secret that more microscopic bugs are more hardy and resilient to environmental dangers. This is one reason that I believe the Asian longhorn beetle fails to compare to the Asian citrus psyllid when speaking of their invasiveness. Obviously, the longer lifespan gives the Asian longhorn beetle a leg up on my citrus psyllid, but I believe that the difference in generations per year between the two bugs makes up for this shortcoming. Not only that, but Ian's bug can lay anywhere from 50 to 125 eggs in its lifetime, while my Asian citrus psyllid can lay up to 800 eggs in a lifetime. I 
think that the Asian citrus psyllid's size and reproduction rate make it a much more formidable foe to the agriculture industry than the Asian long-term beetle. Nolan's Asian citrus psyllid, while it does have an extensive reach on the citrus industry, fails to incapacitate the amount of different types of trees and plants that the Asian longhorn beetle can. Nolan psyllid focuses primarily on citrus plants, while the Asian longhorn beetle affects many different types of trees like maple, ash, and willow trees, just to name a few. The Asian longhorn beetle also has an advantage in terms of lifespan, as its longer the lifespan also allows it to do more damage to their affected trees and reproduce at their alarmingly high rates. Nolan's a Asian citrus psyllid also fails to hide their presence in the way that the Asian longhorn beetle can. The beetle can mass its feces due to the fact that most of the time, the damage they create looks like nothing more than normal holes in the tree. This aspect gives the beetles an aspect of masking detection, which gives them the freedom to damage without being seen and removed. I think these factors all help contribute to, my, to support my assertion that the Asian longhorn beetle is a much more invasive species than the Asian citrus psyllid is. Ian, I hate to tell it to you, but I don't think that the Asian longhorn beetle can mask its damaging effects too well, considering that the United States has already spent an estimated $373 million to combat the bug in a single year. I don't think that this bug is going to catch anybody by surprise, considering the economic effect it has already had in many places across the globe. One advantage that your Asian longhorn beetle does have is that it can get around much better than my Asian citrus psyllid, meaning that it may spread more rapidly. Because the bugs are so different in size, however, I don't think that this is a fair comparison. While I will concede to you that the Asian longhorn beetle may affect much larger areas, I think the Asian citrus psyllid can be much more brutal to smaller, more vegetatively dense areas, and by effect, I believe it is much more invasive when speaking of these areas that are so economically dominated by the exportation of fruit. I would again suggest that the effect of the longer lifespan of the Asian longhorn beetle is negated by the outrageously high reproduction rate of the psyllid. Although the beetle may live longer, the psyllid population will go through multiple generations keeping up with the beetle population. Nolan, I'm going to have to contradict some of your assertions that you've made about the Asian longhorn beetle. First, the bug while prompting the United States to spend $373 million towards eradicating it, has been able to increase the area it affects despite the eradication efforts against it. So, despite the strong efforts to eradicate and completely control the spread, the Asian longhorn beetle continues to increase its affected area, showing that while not completely incognito, it still increases its area at a much faster and wider range than your Asian citrus island. Another assertion I'm disagreeing with is that the difference in size is not a fair comparison. The Asian longhorn beetle's size gives it a significant advantage in terms of being an effective invasive species because it allows it to be more mobile and affect a much larger area than Nolan's much smart, smaller Asian citrus psyllid. Contrary to Nolan's assertion that because of their size, the beetle cannot do as much damage to the plants and trees as they affect as a psyllid, in reality, the beetle does a massive amount of damage regardless of how fast they move and spread because the primary reason they spread is their extensive re reproduction efforts, which are the root of their damage and label as invasive species. So, because of the spread and damage I've outlined here, I believe the Asian longhorn beetle holds the upper hand against Nolan's Asian citrus psyllid in being the most effective and dangerous invasive species. I would suggest that the Asian longhorn beetle may be less invasive over greater areas of land, while the Asian citrus psyllid can do much greater damage across smaller areas. Almost as if you could take a knife and spread out the intensity of the damage caused by the psyllid like butter, resulting in the more outreaching, less intense damage caused by the Asian longhorn beetle. Concerning small areas, however, I believe that because of its microscopic size, the Asian citrus beetle is much more resilient to environmental changes, and because of its ability to not only physically damage citrus plants, but to also spread citrus greening disease, it is able to greatly handicap the entire citrus industry, which heavily relies on imports from agriculturally dense areas. It is because of these factors that I believe the Asian citrus psyllid is a more invasive species than the Asian longhorn beetle. I stand firm in my initial claim that the Asian longhorn beetle holds a greater stand as an invasive species over the Asian citrus psyllid. 
I feel that the widespread damage the Asian longhorn beetle can inflict powers it to being a much larger threat to the areas it already affects and could affect. I would also say that the wide range of industry the beetle affects in its destruction makes it even more dangerous. With the beetle's ability to affect industries like tourism, logging, and even the maple syrup industry, it expands in terms of scope and grasp upon the Asian citrus silage's focus and grasp on the citrus industry. The beetle can affect 15 different types of trees, much more than the silage giving an advantage over the solid in terms of being an invasive species. I believe an invasive species is one that is able to affect and hurt a wide plethora of organisms and affect a, wide, a large area, both of which the Asian longhorn beetle does. I strongly believe that because of its advantage in size, widespread damage, grasp on industries, and reproduction efforts, it gives the Asian longhorn beetle a much stronger foothold as an invasive species compared to the Asian citrus silage.